my channel Naturally Beautiful Girl. I am going to be doing my unboxing and first impressions of my May Petty Board box. So I'm going to be showing you the products that I got in this May box. I've used a couple of them. I will tell you my thoughts on those. And then I will also go back and do a full review of the products in the April Petty Board box. This month we got four different products, one makeup and two like two skincare products and then one kind of body product. The makeup product we got this month was from Han Skincare and it's in this little compact like this. It's an eyeshadow and I have the shade here in Sunset and it's kind of a brown. It does, it is a shimmery brown color. It's got a little bit of like a pinky undertone. It's a little rose goldy kind of, I don't know. I'm really bad at describing these, but this is what it looks like. And um, the value of this is $13, which is almost the entire price of the box. The box itself is $15. And I do have to say, I did go ahead and swatch this and I didn't find it to be super pigmented. I will swatch it here for you guys, of course. Um, like, it's okay. I just wasn't blown away by it. I am going to try putting it on my eyes today. I've not applied it on my eyes before, so we'll see how that works. When I saw this in the box, I did look up the brand online, and one of the things that I really do appreciate about this brand is they do have a lower price point. Their products are a lot more reasonable. Like this eyeshadow itself is only $13, and I think they had some lip glosses. I know they had some lip glosses, and I think a couple other maybe like blush on their website and they were all definitely more affordable, which I appreciate. And the nice thing about this too is it does not contain talc, which I don't use talc in my products. So I was really glad that this did not contain talc and I didn't have to worry about that. So I'm gonna, just gonna go ahead and quickly apply this for you guys. So I, of course, before I put on any eyeshadow, I always go in with my Lima Pure Eye Primer. So to apply this the way I normally apply eyeshadow, I'm going to do that. And then pick up the shadow on the MOTD Pigment Packer Brush, apply it to the lid of my eye, and then I'm gonna take some other shadows and just blend them into my crease. So here it is applied um, just by itself on my eyelids. I haven't applied any other eyeshadow and I like it a lot better on my eyelids than I liked its swatch. It definitely has, uh, I'd say it's like somewhere between a copper, a rose gold kind of color. I'm really bad at describing colors. I definitely like it. I think um, I will obviously need to see how it wears throughout the day and all that, but yeah. I think it's pretty nice and it's not too crazy. It's a nice kind of neutrally color, which is really nice and wearable. All right, so I finished off my eyes by blending the um, Han eyeshadow in Sunset out with the Root Sweet Tea eyeshadow. I popped some of Root Sugar into the inner corner of my eyes. I took Coco Loco by Honey Bee Gardens and then just smudged that along my lower lash line and put the Well People Expressionist Mascara on. And I have to say that the Root Sweet Tea eyeshadow works so well with this Han Sunset. They're very similar in tone. The Root Sweet Tea is matte, whereas obviously the Han eyeshadow has some shimmer. I think this could be a fantastic everyday, super fast eyeshadow look because, because they are similar tone, they're super easy to blend. I actually think I may pop this out and put it into my Z palette so it can live like near the Root Sweet Tea eyeshadow. I think I might get more use out of it than having it in this container. We'll see. I will obviously let you know in my June Petty Board box unboxing if I go ahead and do that. The next product um, I got was from Mullion, Mullion, Mullion and Sparrow. I'll obviously put it in the description bar. It's a soothing face mist and it's a toner for oily and combination skin. First of all, I was super excited when I got this because I have been looking for a toner. Um, I've been looking a lot online. I haven't gone ahead and purchased one yet. So when I got this, I was like, oh, perfect. I needed a toner. Um, one thing I really like about this is it has a spray, which makes it really nice. You can just spray it directly onto your face and it comes in a glass bottle, which I really appreciate. Um, it's always better to have 
products in glass um, bottles. This one I got is for oily slash combination skin, which we know I have very oily skin. It's prone to breakouts, so this sounded good to me. Let's see, it contains distilled water, uh, witch hazel, essential oils of lavender, and spearmint. And I love lavender, I love spearmint, and I have used this twice. And how I've used it is I have used it in the morning as a toner. So I'll like wash my face, do all that, and then after I wash my face and dry it off, then I just spritz this around my face. And um, I don't clean it off with a cotton pad or anything like this. I just kind of spray it and let it just dry. I love the way this feels right now in the summer because of the spearmint. It's kind of tingly and cool. I probably would not use this in the winter because if it's really cold, that just will make me really cold. You live up north, you know what I'm talking about. Like you don't want to use tingly products in the winter because then it's like too cold, too cold. I'm really excited to keep using this over time because it's supposed to be anti-inflammatory, which, you know, inflammation, that's like acne. Um, so I obviously would like to reduce inflammation on my face in terms of acne. But I think this would be more of kind of a long-term um, thing that I will need to use over quite a bit of time to be able to tell if that's actually helping with that. But yeah, I was really excited to get this. I've enjoyed it um, and I am definitely going to continue using this. And I don't know, the full size of it is $36, which is a lot, but I mean, if it really does help clear out my skin, I would be, I would consider purchasing the full size of it. The ingredient list is super short. You're not adding some cocktail of a whole bunch of ingredients to your face. I think this has a lot of promise. The next product I have not used, and I'm not 100% sure I'm going to, at least for not right now. I think it's called Wara, but it's the Java Plum and Avocado Nourishing Face Mask. Sue's deeply hydrates dry and dehydrated skin. I do not have dry skin. I do not have dehydrated skin. We're transitioning from kind of spring to summer right now, although the weather outside is it's like, 50 degrees and rainy. Thank you, New England. Why I'm hesitant to use this is it is supposed to be super moisturizing and it contains um, avocado oil, java plum, banana, and mango, which sounds all really nice, but my skin is really oily right now. I have a whole bunch of clogged pores on my face that I'm dealing with. I have some breakouts. Right now, this does not seem like a good time to be putting this on my skin. I probably will break them and try it some point, but I don't need a deeply hydrating mask and you don't wash it off. You're supposed to let it sit on your face. It just sounds like it could be way too much and aggravate my clogged pores. Maybe I'll try this, but it might also just get passed along to somebody else that could use it. And the last product is an aromatherapy and associates bath and shower oil. And it's this little, little itty bitty oil. It is a glass container, once again, which is nice. It's supposed to de-stress muscles. So the scent I have is lavender, rosemary, ginger, juniper, pine, and a whole bunch of other essential oils. So it's like an essential oil blend. And you're supposed to rub this on your body before you get into the shower and then the warm water. It's supposed to kind of release the oils. I don't know. So I did try this last night. I put it on before I showered. And the, okay, the first thing that was really annoying about it is it's just like an open cap here. I feel like if it had been a rollerball, it would have been 10 times easier to control. I ended up spilling some of it, which this is $5 for this whole, this little guy and the full size is 73. And I don't know what the bottle for the full size looks like, but I feel like it could be kind of annoying and difficult to control. But anyway, I ended up spilling some of it. So my bathroom smelled nice, but I didn't necessarily want it going just on the floor in my bathroom. When I put it on it, I don't know, it smelled nice. I got in the shower and then it just kind of washed off. I don't really see the point to this. I don't know, it just seems kind of floofy, like it smells nice, but that was kind of it for me. So I would never purchase something like this, is what I'm saying. Actually, I was thinking about maybe just kind of using it as perfume because it did smell really nice. It smells very lav lavender-y, so maybe I'll just kind of put it on like a perfume, but using it and putting it on and then getting a shower just didn't really do anything for me and just, I felt like it was kind of a waste of the product. By the way, the toner mist value was $8. The mask was $6 and the bath and shower oil was $5. So it was a value of $19, $32 and the price of the box was 15. So 
it was pretty good. And now I'm going to move on to my review of the previous month's box. And I am going to start with the makeup product from last month's box. And this was the Marie Natty lip gloss. I'm not a huge, huge fan of lip glosses, but I like this one. It has enough pigment that I don't need a lip liner under it. I can just apply it. It's really great if my lipstick is worn off and I just need to like run out to the grocery store in the evening or it's just something like that where I want a little bit more color in my lips, but I don't necessarily want to reapply a lipstick. I like this. It's not mind blowing, but it definitely does its job and I will continue using it. And it is fairly moisturizing and not too sticky. So those are also nice things about it. We also got this French Girl Organic Nail Cuticle Oil. So I had high hopes for this and I've been using it basically every night. It has a rollerball application, which I think is really, really great. It helps to keep you from getting the oil all over the place, but I just don't find it to be moisturizing. I put it on my cuticles, they look oily, but they don't feel any more hydrated after I put it on. I let, I put it on right before I go to bed. When I wake up in the morning, my cuticles are still dry. It just doesn't do much for me. Uh, like I said, I have it. I'm going to continue using it, but I would not purchase this. Would not just, it doesn't do enough for me. So the next product that we got was the Sun Tegrity 5-in-1 Natural Moisturizer Face Sunscreen. As I mentioned in my review, this is tinted, but it is not that tinted. I don't find it to be pigmented enough to wear on its own, but I have tried it and used it as a primer, kind of like under my foundation and then put my foundation on top. And my face does get a little bit more oily than usual when I have this on as a primer. But I mean, sometimes if you're gonna be outside like at a theme park or something and you want some extra sun protection, this is really great. I am, I have more left in here and this is going to be going to Spain with me so I can use it as a primer. Also because it's travel size, I figured that would be a really good use for it. Like I said, wouldn't wear it on its own, but it does its jobs, you know, if I wanna put it on like as a primer. The last product that we got in last month's box was the Nubian Heritage Patchouli and Broody Body Lotion. Here's what it looks like here. Um, it is really strongly scented. I don't like, and I don't like the scent of Patchouli and Broody apparently either. The fact that I don't like the scent and it's super strongly scented, not my favorite. The nice thing about it is, is it is super moisturizing and it rubs in really easily. So sometimes my husband, you know, sometimes we try to be a little bit romantic and he'll help me like apply lotion on my legs and he used this one on my legs and one of the things he commented without me saying anything is that oh this rubs in really easily because i have the akira body lotion and lavender and that's the one that's kind of like my standard one because i can pick it up at whole foods and it goes on sale every once in a while so i normally keep one of those around and that's what he's used to using and that one is hard to rub in like you have to do a lot of rubbing to get it to absorb in and this one absorbs in without that much rubbing, which he really liked about it. But I also know that the Indigo Wild Zum Body Lotion absorbed in really easily. It wasn't as strongly scented. So I would probably be more likely to purchase that one. Actually, yes, I would be more likely to purchase the Zum Body over this one. So I hope you found this unboxing and review and first impressions helpful and maybe a little bit entertaining. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel. Also check out my Instagram. I'll have my handle down below. I'm at Naturally Beautiful Girl. And once again, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye.